last week, and I'll put a link to that video from last week, I talked about uh, how he was born and his name in his first early years. Now I want to go on and talk about his next part of his life. Paul's family was very adamant about the law, about following the law. And of course, uh, Paul, he had had almost like, I think, a photographic mind because he had memorized all of the Torah, the Mishnah, and the Talmud, which are uh, rabbis' discussions and documentaries about the Torah. Uh, the, and that would be the books of Moses, the Old Testament. So when he was 13, he went to study in Jerusalem. And uh, so the students lived there. There was like a dormitory where they lived there in Jerusalem, and he studied under uh, Gamma Meal, and only the top students would have studied under, uh, under him because uh, he was the top teacher of that time. So anyway, um, he would be there until he was about 18 years old. Now, uh, Paul had talked about that he wanted to, at that time, to go up as high as he could and so for him, that would have been um, a member of the Sanhedrin. Now, to be a member of the Sanhedrin, you had to be, have, uh, be married and have a family, have kids, at least one kid. <laughs> um, and it was tradition that once you finished your studies at 18, and, you, and then he went back home, uh, that he would get married. Now, did he get married or didn't he get married? There's a lot of controversy about that. Oh, I just dropped my notes. Hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of controversy about that. So, um, this has been what it, when he would have been married. And so, there's after he got out of the school... It was about uh, about 10 years before he shows up again in Jerusalem. So during that, between 8 and 10 years, I don't think they know the exact dates, did he get married? Well, historians, um, a theologian, a the, 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 <laughs> a theologian, well, anyway, okay, up here. Clement of Alexandria, he said that Paul was married uh, in his miscellaneous book three. And that was uh, in 231 AD. So it was just a couple hundred years after Paul. And uh, to be on the Sanhedrin, like I said, you had to be married. Then a uh, first century historian, Ig Ignatius, Ignatius, Oh, I'm terrible with names, aren't I? I should look these up. Um, he said that Paul was married. In, okay, <laughs> I'll put that up there and in the links. I'll put these in the links. And also the historian in the 4th century, Eusebius, also said that Paul was married. Now, later on, Paul, when he wrote the letter to the Corinthians, said he, he wasn't married. But I have a feeling that perhaps his... Uh, he might have gotten married, and uh, perhaps his wife had died. And prop I'm thinking that he, he might have died in childbirth, because he doesn't mention ever having any children. Although, when he was on his missionary journey in Lystra, he, uh, that's where he met Timothy. And Timothy was like 17 or 18 years old. And, of course, Paul, he's, uh, what, in his, like, 30s or 40s. And... Um, he called him his his son, so it was like his son. Now, when I was growing up, I was over at my friend's house so often that her mother, even though she had three daughters already, always called me her other daughter. So I think if he had any children, some uh, any sons at least anywhere, he would have said uh, that, that Timothy is like my other son or like another son to me, but he didn't. He said a son. So those are all hints that he may have been. 
Now, why didn't he get married again if, if he hadn't been married before? Well, I'm thinking that uh, Paul, when he started uh, talking with Jesus that uh, in the Spirit, that he thought that Jesus was going to come back again really soon. So that's why he said, you know, you have to be like prepared every day that he's going to come back really quick. So I think that's kind of telling us too that we should today always live like he could come today or tomorrow. And if you live that way, then if he, he happens to come while you're alive, you, you would be all ready. So anyway, after about 10 years, uh, he went back to Tarsus and he's working in his father's shop and everything. Then um, it was, yeah, in 30, AD 32, or C32, I don't know how they do it. I always say AD, 32 AD. Uh, he was first mentioned again back in, uh, in Jerusalem with the stoning of Stephen. So he was back in Tarsus when he heard about all the Christians and that they her heretical heret heretical <laughs> they were heretics and so he uh you have to excuse me today <laughs> this is afternoon i should have been able to do this earlier <laughs> anyway uh yeah I, I lost track where i was hey god so anyway i don't know where i was at but so he, he was, it was like 10 years, 8 to 10 years that he had gone back home. Then he heard about the, the Christians and that they were heretics. And he thought, well, why isn't anybody doing anything about it? So he said, I'm going to go do something about it. And so when he went back to Jerusalem, it had been 8 to 10 years. So he probably knew a few of the, the people on the, the Sanhedrin. A few of the elders, I'm sure, knew him. And so he came back as Saul. They knew him as Saul. And uh, so he was doing his reign of terror. And so he did that probably a, at least a year or two. And then he was on his way to Damascus and he'd gotten the letters. And it was probably easy for him to get the letters because, like I say, the San, a lot of the people on the Sanhedrin either knew him or knew of him. So, on his way to Damascus, then he went to uh, Arabia. And that's in Galatians 1.17. I put links for these down in the description box. So, he was in Arabia for three years. And during that time is when the Lord came to him in visions. And he opened up all of the... All of the Torah and everything that that Paul had memorized and everything and and showed how it it talked talked about the Messiah and that how Jesus was the Messiah so he studied for about three years for that after that he went back to Damascus and he was with the other Christians there for a little bit and then he went to Jerusalem and he was there for a little bit but he felt it was very dangerous for him there, so he went back home to Tarsus. Now, he was in Tarsus for uh, almost eight years. Eight years. So now we're, we're talking about between 18 and 20 years from when he went to, to, uh, to study there in Jerusalem as a, as a teenager. So he was living in Tarsus, but they knew him, and Antioch had become... Uh, became and that's that was north of Damascus kind of became the center of the of the Christian people then and Barnabas now he probably knew Barnabas from when he went to school because there was a uh, a, a Joseph that he had made friends with who went by uh, the nickname of Barnabas so I'm thinking it's the same Barnabas that he knew really well and so the Christians in Antioch wanted to, to send the missionaries out. So Barnabas says, well, I'm going to go get, get Paul. So Saul, <laughs> he probably called him Saul. Anyway, so he goes to Tarsus and gets Paul, brings him back. And 
then they go on their missionary journeys. So did you follow all that? <laughs> I, I'm going to put that in the description so you can look it over again. But I find it's interesting that he sent so, spent so much time back home. He didn't just automatically, on the road to Damascus, become a Christian and then go out as a missionary. There was a lot of time in between there. So that when he went back, uh, years later, after his missionary journeys, he, when he went back, he was going by Paul um, when he went back to Jerusalem. I don't think there was anybody left in the Sanhedrin that uh, would have known that he was the Saul from before, but they knew him as the Paul. He probably looked different, you know, after all the missionary, and he's older. And so it had been like 20 years, uh, 18 to 20 years. So anyway, that's that next segment of Paul's life. And uh, the next time... I, I will talk about his missionary journeys and how that's really interesting. And he changed a lot during his missionary journeys. And uh, well, I'll be talking about that. So I thank you for sticking to the end with me. Uh, I know today was a little rocky. So uh, next time I think I will be a little bit more prepared <laughs> or awake or something. I don't know. I'm I'm not too to coherent to hit today i apologize <laughs> anyway i'd like to pray for you let me take my glasses off yeah okay <clears throat> father help me with the words and things show me what to pray for the people yes paul is very interesting and the Lord wants you to know that living a life like Paul is how we can live today. And when we start studying more about the life of Paul, you'll see the miracles that happened in his life happen today. Miracles happen today. So Lord, help us to understand your Bible. Oh, anyone out there right now who's in pain, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, I sent out healing in the name of Jesus. Anyone sad and desperate, hang on. Just hang on. In just a few days, everything will change. Just hang on. You can hang on. If you can't hang on another day, you can hang on half a day. Just hang on and know things are going to get better shortly. Shortly. Yes, I see that. So anyway, bless you, and the Lord keep you, and I hope to see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.